Welcome to part two of our three-part special on Noctis Valkyrie 666. I'm your host, Simon. And I'm your host, Mark. Coming up in this episode, we have an interview with the mighty Gene Hoagland, as well as Luke LeMay from Gorguts. But to kick the show off, we spoke to CJ Ortiz from Metal Motivation. Everybody gets down, so don't condemn yourself when it happens to you. Here's how to shock yourself out of it. Metal up. What got you into actually doing the metal motivation? I'd always done some kind of personal development. I'd done it for about 20 plus years. And I had uh, was doing something with another life coach called 10 Times More. This was back in 2007. And he decided to run for Congress. So he goes to run for Congress. He said, listen, it's your baby anyway, you take it. And I had, um, it was just a general kind of mass thing. It wasn't anything specific like metal motivation. And then I was on YouTube one day and I saw this guy, who was like a punk rocker. He was doing something on Law of Attraction or whatever, which I'm not personally endorsed, but I liked what he was doing with punk rock. I didn't really care for it too much, and I said, it really doesn't define what it is that I do. So I'd always referred to something as a metal approach to this. So I just kind of put the two together, and I said, you know what, I'd like to do something that's more specific to metal, has that kind of moniker to it, that kind of, you know, just that edgy, uncompromising, black and white, sense of conviction, straightforward, just, uncompromising approach and so that's that's really where it started then about a year later uh, I met a friend of mine Todd who you met earlier and uh, we talked about it for a year and finally launched it in Halloween of 2009 we all get down sometimes we all get a little tired or burn out from the daily grind of the same routine but we know that if we don't keep charging ahead we'll be taking five steps back real quick somehow we've got to keep our head in the game so what, what uh makes you come up with the different topics that you uh, actually uh, tackle on a well I've, I've i've studied all areas of life i'm a student of everything from philosophy to history to theology to you name it i've looked at it all and uh people often ask me what books i recommend and they, but by that they mean self-help motivational kind of books and i actually don't read much of any at all um i really more look at other systems of thought and I already have that sort of optimistic approach and I just kind of direct it that way. Humanity's love of death knows no boundaries and the saga of destruction remains the worst side of our darker side. Yet nothing is as inexplicable as self-destruction. Would you say that metal is not just a lifestyle, it's a sort of uh, a way of being? I think, uh, no, I think it's very much a lifestyle. You know, we talked about this off camera, which was that, you know, once metal has you, it has you for life. Otherwise, you were never really metal to begin with. Um, metal is, there's something about it that resonates with the deepest aspects, I think, of something we've lost. Most people fail because they quit. Shocking yourself during those temptations to quit is all it takes to keep you faithful through the crucible. This is CJ with Metal Motivation. And remember, in whatever you do, don't suck. Metal up. We're sacrificing and you're watching Extreme Fucking Metal. Yeah! Besides all the kick-ass bands playing at Noctis, there was also a lot of other things on the go as well. There was a conference we mentioned last week, and there was also a metal sale where you could go around. There was lots of records for sale and uh, all kinds of little metal goodies. But besides that, there was also some clinics happening as well. And one of my favorites, and it was one of definitely one of the highlights of the, the festival for me, was uh, the Gene Hoagland Clinic. Yeah, you never, unfortunately, you never had a chance to check that out. No, unfortunately, I had to do this thing called working. Yeah, it's never good. No. One no. Wants to do that, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it really was one of the, the highlights for me. Uh, Gene told all kinds of crazy stories about the guys played in so many different bands, uh, and we had a chance to hook up with them. Actually, uh, I'd like to thank Derek for hooking me up with this Gene Hogan shirt. Check this out. I hit things hard and a lot. <laughs> Sounds like they personified my motto in life right there. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, uh, and thanks to Derek for hooking up us with the Gene Holden interview. That was a uh, really big thrill for me. I mean, he's played in so many iconic bands. Yes, uh, to name a few, uh, we got Fear Factory. And Testament. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we actually tried to get him to sing hey, well, all, uh, the bands that he played in, and he even... Uh, <laughs> He, he even drew a blank for a bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, so let's just get this uh, Gene Hoagland interview right now on EMTV. So what can people expect to see when they, they go to the Gene Hoagland experience? Fun. 
fun. Was that fun today? That was I, hella fun. <laughs> it, that's was, right. it was one of the, the best times I had at the conference. I thought it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. That's what it is all the yeah. time. It's just fun. You know, I everything is off the top of my head. <laughs> I just I make up everything. That's why, you know, I say, hey, ask me questions and that'll help this thing kind of roll along a little bit. But it's just completely ad libbed every single thing up there. And it looks like it too, you know. So um, it's just I, I like having fun. So is this a new thing that you've been doing, or have you been doing that for a while? I know you did the, the DVD uh, and, all, and all that. Yeah, uh, well, actually, this, what I'm doing here is basically the same clinic that I have done, you know, just the same approach to a drum clinic that I've done since I started doing clinics in 93. Yeah. Um, the first time I ever did a clinic, a couple of people came up to me and said, holy hell, that was really fun. You know, I go to a lot of drum clinics, and that was like no drum clinic I've ever seen before, except maybe for like somebody like Dom Famularo, who is an amazing clinician. He's one of the best drummers in the world and he's an amazing clinician. And so I guess he was probably an influence on this to some degree where he just gets up and talks and is really engaging with the audience. He's like, I can do that. I like being engaging. So um, that's, yeah, that's that's kind of where it, where it comes from. And so it's basically the same thing I've been doing for 20 years. Now it's got a title. Now, you seem to be the guy that people go to as uh, in an emergency, the drummer in an emergency. They yeah. go to you a lot of times. Uh, do you have any stories about having to fill in on short notice? Well, like <laughs> I was telling some today, you know, like frequently I get, um, you know, I get literally hours to, lo to learn a set. Um, uh, yeah, like with Opeth, for instance, that was something that was, you know, the afternoon, like about noon or one or something like that, uh, while we were on tour together on the Sounds of the Underground, you know, they had to let their drummer go. So I walk into catering at, at you know, like about one o'clock and everybody looks really glum and I'm like, what's going on guys? And they're like, we have to get rid of our drummer. You know, he's got to go home. We have to go home. This tour is over for us. And I was like, here I come to save the day. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was like, you know, and they were like, hey man, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, sure. What time do you guys go on? And they're like, about six o'clock tonight. And I was like, well, that gives us four or five hours. Let's get to work. And played the set. And it was awesome. Thank God it was four songs. Like I said, 10 minute <laughs> yeah, songs. But uh, songs. <laughs> still, yeah, it was, it was great, you know. And like with Unearth, I got, you know, pretty much uh, an overnight's notice, you know. So it, it happens where it's like, hey, this is an emergency. Who, you know. Who do you go, Gene? So, yeah, that's cool. I like it. Well, how do you feel to be that that guy, that the go-to guy? That's really nice. I guess that's probably what I started trying to do. Like I said earlier, I was, you know, I've been doing this, wanting to do this since I was 11, and you know, when I started kind of figuring out where I wanted to go with my career, I was like, well, if I'm not going to be a band, one band guy be that hoe and play with everybody you can and, and that helps you, you know, it helps your playing, it helps your chops and so I enjoy being the go-to guy, you know, that's really cool. This year's Noctis was definitely the best Noctis so far. Noctis Valkyrie 666. Yeah, it was definitely a favorite for me because there were so many good bands. Like, uh, we're all having Carcass headline was kind of amazing to finally get to see the mighty Carcass live. And so many good performances. And one of my favorites was Gorguts. What did you think of Gorguts' set? Oh, Gorguts was amazing. I tell you, the mosh pit went absolutely crazy. I was about five feet away from the mosh pit. And yes, they were jumping around. They were following. We were singing. We were just going, just insanity it was just brutality and insanity but you gotta know heavy metal etiquette you drop your brother you pick up your brother if you don't we will come looking for you <laughs> that's for sure yeah uh well uh speaking of gore guns uh, iconic uh, canadian death metal and those guys pushed the genre so much i was blown away by their set i was uh, just it was a lesson in death metal 
And uh, our very own James Neal had a chance to sit down with Luke LeMay from Gorguts. And uh, well, let's check that interview out right now, shall we? <laughs> Why don't you tell us about your new album? Uh, in what way? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the concept or how I feel about it? or? Uh? Yeah, just uh, just give us your general feeling about how it came together and okay. uh, to where we are right now. Okay, so uh, it came together uh, once uh, after, uh, I mean the idea came together uh, it's uh, Big Steve that proposed me to uh, to do another Gorgots record, and honestly, I never thought about doing that. You know, since I was like done with the band in 2002 or something, 2003, then joined Negativa uh, a little bit after. I mean, a couple years after that. But the thing is, like uh, after uh, Negativa rehearsal, Steve came to me and he said, uh, "You know, we're having a snack in town. You know, Friday night and everything." And he said. Uh, Dude, there's something I gotta tell you. I was like, is there something wrong or anything? <laughs> he goes, uh, no, but I've uh, been thinking, you know, uh, in, in two years, a year or two, it's gonna be the Gorgut's uh, 20 anniversary. I said, damn, you're right. And he said, why don't you just do another record, you know, for the fans, you know, I'm sure people would be thrilled, you know, to, to have another record and everything. I said, you are damn right, that's a good idea. <laughs> Because at MDF, when we played there two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 2010, three years ago, uh, the music was pretty much all written. We jammed a bit after that in November, and we, we finished uh, all the, the, the music. And then I started writing the lyrics after that. And it's the first time in all our discography that I was not doing lyrics and music at the same time. Hmm. I wanted to have all the music canvas finished so I can full-time focus only on words, and ideas. There's a language barrier a bit, yeah. you know. Uh, I can speak English, but writing, writing poetry in a different language, yeah. that's a different story. We're not talking about, hey, watch the game yesterday or whatever. Yeah. It's, you're in ideas, concept, and uh, reading books to, 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 to educate myself on, the, the, on what I wanted to talk about. So, but I'm so thrilled about the record. <laughs> So it's been 12 years since the last Gorgats album, and a lot can change in 12 years, and you've kind <laughs> of uh, kind of given us a little a little uh, insight into that. And how do you approach making Gorgats up music now, opposed to back in the day? Um, it's different, and at the same time, there's many things are the same. You know, sitting down, jamming, questioning yourself: What do I really want to hear? What kind of song I would like to hear? okay this and this and that you know so those are same preoccupation but uh, what I've changed is maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, focusing on the song structures uh, not that song structure never been important in the past but uh, I realized by writing more and more and more music Virtuosity to me became more important instead of playing complicated riff. Yeah. I like better uh, focusing and putting more details in uh, arrangements and song structures. Because you, you can have a very simple riff, but how are you going to dress it up and what are you going to do with it? You know, uh, uh, cut it in half take uh, the, the, the head or the tail of the riff and just expose it later on and, and mess with those things instead of just, okay, sit down and, yeah. and practicing a tough riff on guitar, you know? Because yeah, playing sure. guitar for playing guitar, I'm not much in, into that, you know? It just happened to be the tool that I chose to, uh, to express myself, you know? But if I don't have anything to write, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play. Well, that's it for another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I'd also like to thank the king of Extreme Metal Television, Mark. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, if you'd like to get in touch with us, it is pretty easy. You can email us at uh, extrememetaltv at gmail.com, or you can uh, uh, follow us on Twitter at extrememetaltv. Remember to like us on Facebook and get the latest up-to-date news on Extreme Metal Television. Yeah, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode, part three of three. That's going to be one to look forward to. Lots of really cool interviews coming up in that. But to end the show off, before we let you guys go, I finally got to see one of my favorite bands of all time, the Mighty Candlemas. Uh, I never thought I was going to get a chance to see them. Uh, I, they don't play very often. They play festivals, and I never thought I was going to get a chance to see them on this side of the pond. So I was this is my here. third time seeing them. And you suck. For that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> well, we got lots of great footage of Candlemas, so uh, uh, why don't we check some of that out? Until next time, guys. Keep it metal. Uh,